Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. We are live. Greetings, greetings, and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. Actually, today is going to be Real Talk with Lisa. And I do have an incredible friend of mine, a beautiful soul who is always uh, there to support me and be with me, Chris Gota. Welcome, Chris. Hello, Lisa. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. Well, today is like we came all the way to the end of june it seems like every month there's something to talk about there's yes. something that comes into the news something that is impacting us um everyone mm -hmm. uh, nationwide so today we're going to be talking about women women's rights and what just happened this week roe versus wade and everything that has come about the march that is going on you know a lot of people messaged me and said you've been silent about this or what do you have to say so today is exactly what we are doing let's have some real talk chris introduce yourself and let's begin I'm Chris Gota, Christelle Gota, and I'm a CEO of Hawaii Cancer Care. It's a private practice oncology practice in uh, the state of Hawaii. We're the only community practice in Hawaii. And uh, as a healthcare executive and a mom, uh, you know, I have also been approached by some people in the light of probably since May, since the leak of the um, Supreme Court opinion about Roe versus Wade and now the subsequent um, actual overturning of uh, of the decision by the Supreme Court asking, you know, what's going on? What's what uh, what does this mean for us? So I'm here to help answer questions and give my perspective humbly um, about the issue and um, hope that, that, you know, there can be some good productive dialogue that goes forward. OK, so let's um, discuss Roe versus Wade, why it was placed and it came about um, for the women's rights uh, for us, women having the right to their own body, having their own choice and the decisions that they want to make for their own selves, right? And this case has been being, um, how do I say it? There's been so many attempts to reverse it. And this is not the first time. Right. So, right? right. So when right. we want to talk about this, is it something that it's affecting every state? I believe not, because I think the Supreme Court has made this decision and said, instead of nationwide or who I am as the ruler, I want every state to make their own decision. Yes, that that's um, that's basically what the 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 legalities of the of the opinion and the subsequent overturning of the ruling right. resulted in. It's basically the Supreme Court that whose job it is is to interpret the Constitution mm -hmm. has basically said that the the right to have an abortion or not be put in jail for having an abortion or performing an abortion is not covered under the Fourteenth Amendment. And the 14th Amendment came after the abolition of slavery because the 13th Amendment was the one that that abolished slavery. And but more than that, the Constitution said, well, besides just ending, you know, uh, uh, indentured servitude, all of the rights that in, are enjoyed by non slaved people will be then, uh, you know, um, extended to former slaves. So it's under that amendment that Roe and the, the case of Roe versus Wade ensured the right of basically liberty or privacy extended to women and reproductive rights. So, you know, as much as, as I am distressed by the fact that something like this can be reversed and that rights, liberties, and protections are now kind of narrowed for women as, as disturbed and, you know, um, uh, annoyed I am by that, it still unfortunately has some, you know, some legal ground. There, There's some logic to that, 
that it was kind of weak to begin with the 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 ruling and it didn't go far enough and i i have to agree with that part of it um unfortunately what it what it essentially did was it let the supreme court wash their hands or let the constitution wash their hands of this issue and put right. it back on the states that could be good or bad it really depends on on uh your your view of how how we can use the constitution and how we use our legal system so you know um it all goes back to the fact that the constitution is this incredible document that allows for representative government so if you know if you're confused about what's going on Unfortunately, you do need to go back and learn what the Constitution is all about, why it's here, and why we're depending so much on it for all of the these things that we enjoy now as Americans. And if we even know if it, you know, the question is, is it enough? Because obviously, look at what's happened, you know, it doesn't feel like it's enough, right? Well, what is enough? Um, what is being pro and pro-choice of what is it being i mean i know there is this mandate there's coming out that there's going to be a ruling that every child between 15 around 15 years old is going to have uh, the right to choose about their own health care and everything so they want to give the right to a child and yet right here roe versus wade got um dismissed and it was overturned but it's not that a woman does not have the right it's still we still have the right what we want what we don't want and what's happening to our body so let's let's say there is a 14 year old that gets impregnated okay does she have the same right as the 21 year old and we go to the family uh, family planning you know even then they're going to say where is your guardian where is the person who's you know bring someone that we know it's to take care of you you cannot make a decision for something like this okay so that, that's what it is because the legality is like the age for family planning for them to do something like that is also so a 14 year old cannot make that kind of a decision i believe and yet because they're still young and god forbid when something like that has happened then i mean it's like was the it, the guardian the parent was it forced was it uh you know was it willing i mean it's there is yeah. so much into this and that is is it about the constitution is it about a woman or a girl's choice mm. i've been both sides and i remember when i was young and i made that choice and i have talked to so many of my clients and because i talk to everyone about health and wellness especially women who have come after an abortion and they literally it's not an easy choice it isn't and no matter who says what it's not an easy choice it's a lot of thinking and feeling as if i am boxed in either religious or uh feeling um that i have to either family or no matter what it is or a boyfriend no matter what when a woman comes to that decision it's not the first thing that comes into her mind and the after the fact is they go through a lot of uh, depression they can go through a lot of grieving and uh, self self-criticism of why I did that so it's not an easy decision for people to mm. think you know what just go and get an abortion why don't you just take a pill the next day no it's not that simple right and um sorry go on it would, go would, ahead um, you know I'm talking that side because people think that um you know, it, it's an easy thing to do. It's the hardest decision to make. And yet when I was working at family planning many, many years ago, in the seven months that I was there, 
you won't believe it. There were people there that unfortunately, and I'm not saying this for everyone, they abused the system in a way they used it as a, like a, um, a pill and they would come in the seven months I was there. One woman came in four times saying it's cheaper than going on a pill. So what, what is going on? Is it about the state? Is it about law? Is it about us? Is it about women making those decisions for themselves? You co- you covered quite a bit in your little statement. I so know. I think I think I have a response that will kind of address all of those things. I and get emotional. <laughs> I know, I know. And I, I want to um for anyone who's really interested in learning more about this, I suggest or I invite you to visit the CDC's website and we can put a link on your um, of course we will. Words for this, but is abortion statistics. So they, ha- they do have a surveillance system to, to look at what, um, how abortions are being utilized in the country. And in two, 2018, I'm reading this right from the CDC's website. In 2018, women in their 20s accounted for more than half of the abortions, 57.7% in 2018. Right. However, um, if you look at the statistics over time, there was a decrease in overall numbers of abortion from from 2003 to 2018. There was a decrease. So I think if you look at these statistics and really dive into the reasons why these statistics exist, you, there's kind of some things that you can kind of pull from these statistics. So, uh, you know, Roe versus Wade happened in the late 80s and and um, and from the 90s till till the mid 2000s there was actually a decrease. If you look at the graph that's on the CDC, the number of abortions actually went down. Right. So how is it that when abortions are, are, are decriminalized and made more available, the number of abortions decrease? That's a significant issue. And I think people on the pro-choice side should really use that statistic to, to um, present the, the, the idea that when you, you decriminalize these type of things like abortion, and uh, all of these things, it opens up other possibilities for women, including, you know, um, sex education, contraception, and healthier alternatives. Now, the other the other uh, um, statistic is that, uh, you know, 57% or more than half of the abortions performed um, were uh, women in their 20s. Why is that? So that's another thing to really, to really, uh, um, analyze so women in their 20s for some reason if there is a pregnancy what there is called an unintended pregnancy for some reason abortion is is sought after or or the this unintended unintended pregnancy puts women in their 20s at some sort of disadvantage that is that abortion is is needed right so in in your case or in other cases where where women choose this in their 20s and 30s there's lots of reasons. Economic, right? Number one. Economics can be one. There's career. an economic. Yeah. If I were in my twenties, you know, just let's look look at this generalize. Just let's just generalize the t- t- statistic. Sorry, <laughs> I can't stop talk today. So a woman in their twenties is probably in college, in the middle of their college career, or just starting out their career, just graduated exactly. college, just starting out their career, and suddenly there's a, a pregnancy, an unintended pregnancy. Right. So. For some reason, being pregnant is now an eco- there's now an economic disadvantage to being pregnant in your 20s, right? So, or maybe you're not married. Maybe there's some other reason. And now, so besides economic disadvantage, there's stigma. There's right. There's a stigma there to, to be uh, pregnant and outside of marriage, or or pregnant and and within a marriage, and then there's some other circumstance. So, but if you F, if you really look at this, why? Why then do men not have that same economic and social disadvantage when the person they impregnated becomes pregnant? And this is really goes to answer some of the some of the, the things you talked about, right, Lisa, is that um, you had reasons to do it because there was a, a family situation, an economic situation. You faced it, but the 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 man that you were with that that was the father of the child had none of those didn't face any of those. Why? So that's really, I think, 
the crux of the question. And, and if you if we really analyze it and really listen to the other side, what I what is amazing is, you know, as I've thought about this, pro-life and pro-choice people are actually on the same side. If they you are. really think about it, we're really on the same side. So if I don't know if if there's a compromise that can be made or some way of, of coming together, but really what it is is there's no way that men can be equal to women. And I say that in a very specific way. Men can never be equal to women when it comes to reproductive rights because they don't have a uterus. But at the same time, I really warn against people saying no uterus, no opinion because it, it, it isn't about that. It's the same, it's, that's just as bad as saying no penis, no opinion. Of course, they, it's, it's unequal, but their equity can be reached, right? So right. although men are unequal to women when it comes to reproduction, equity can be reached. Some people have said, well, why is it that women have to be encumbered? So why, why are we going towards being unencumbered, right? That's what uh, pro-life is saying, well, well, if you want um, equality, then that's how you have to go. You have to be unencumbered. You have to be like a man, uh, you know, just not have to, like, to carry a, 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 want, um, um, a life in your in your body. But that that's impossible, too, because men don't have uteruses. They can't carry a life in their body. So. And, you know, uh, there's also the discussion that uh, a boyfriend or a husband wants to know, I mean, if some go to the abortion clinic with their with the woman, the young girl, whatever. And there are ones who say, you know, it's your body. I don't care what you want to do. And there's the ones who say you have no right to do that because I'm, I'm a part of it. All right. So but when we look at statistics and we're talking about statistics, um, I was doing my own check and if believe it or not in the year 2020 which is only two years ago and that smack during COVID there was more abortions that happened a 26 percent increase in abortions mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. because I believe COVID brought everyone together and we were stuck in the same house and those who were stuck in the same house with their significant other or with their boyfriend or the intimacy if there wasn't before it happened or if there was a dv situation whatever situation that ignited this entire thing and a lot of pregnancies happened that was unplanned or not intended to it was not a choice but it happened of course i'm also the first person to say accidents do not happen because you know there is no accident there is there is always an action and something happens there is an action for it and the accident is the ramification or the result of whatever happened so but 26% of increase in abortion that happened, that's a lot. So when you're talking about a decrease and then suddenly COVID brought an increase, which it brought a lot of abuse, it brought a lot of alcoholism, it brought off a lot of, so drugs and fights and also the need for abortion. So at that moment, I still believe it is a woman's right to turn around and say, no matter how hard it is at this time, this decision is the only or the best decision I can come up with. And there is no other woman, no other man, no country, no law, no attorney that can turn around and say, you are in the wrong. You have no right. Well, in certain states, they can't say that. In certain states, Correct. they can criminalize your choice to have an abortion or uh, or criminalize people who perform abortions. So that's okay. what the overturning of Roe versus Wade means. 
is that right. it is criminalized in more states than than exactly yeah than not. and i also look at the other side there's women who don't even know they're pregnant until five weeks okay. six weeks mm -hmm. and it's already pushing it to the first trimester and a part of the law is after 24 weeks that is wrong because now a baby is really a baby so that is where the line gets a little bit fuzzy mm -hmm. and foggy okay. because now it's some say from the moment of conception it's a baby and one is when the heart is developed it's a baby so and that is not a discussion for at this moment but you know for everyone to understand no matter what we decide there's going to be emotional connection i don't think mm, there is a single woman would want to hurt herself intentionally yeah yeah and um um i know that everybody likes to push off or tries to push off the morality question and all of this and right. i have been i have been um politically pro-choice for really my whole life but socially and emotionally i've been pro-life um uh and what i mean by that is i i personally believe that life begins at con conception but i also believe that women should not be criminalized abortion uh, physicians should not be criminalized for performing abortions and um just very quickly want to take it back to the constitution because um you know where does this discussion have to take place because you're looking at morality and then you're looking at legality exactly and and, and remember this is a legal thing we're talking about right, right we're talking about a legal thing but legal things come from morality come from moral questions and and we do have the the only thing that exists today for us to count on and to stand on is the constitution and the constitutional process right because when this whole thing happened in 1788 when they finally ratified it you know half of the half of the people didn't want to ratify it because it it um it, it, they couldn't they couldn't they were trying to abolish slavery at the at the writing of the constitution at the declaration of independence but there was quite a few people that wouldn't ratify it because they were slave owners and so there was a decision made that they would compromise they would compromise and say okay we can keep slavery in there just we just got to pass this constitution we just you know we won the revolutionary war we have to have our our representative government set up so let's just do this let's go forward we'll worry about the slave question later but really you know i mean the legality when the 13th amendment finally was passed it was because of the moral dilemma that the founding fathers faced and again you know these these things i like to 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 see the the constitution as like a like a you know a colander or a, a sieve right and everything that's thrown in there you know um you know all the rights liberties and protections of the constitution could be thrown in there you know and over time you know things have fallen through because the holes in this there's a lot of gaps in the constitution a lot of holes a lot of things fall through in the very beginning it was slaves that fell through and women that fell through right and if you look at a picture of the of the declaration of independence and you look at a paint the, that famous painting of all those those people in the room you look in and you cannot find a single person of color or a woman in that in that picture so the right of representative government the right of the people to create a government by consent of the governed who gives consent back in 1788 it was just men men of european descent possibly landowners everybody else wasn't even considered you ask those guys back then it was almost like saying you know you're going to give rights to your goldfish they're like goldfish it wasn't they weren't jerks about it they just it just wasn't in their head so that's what i mean by the constitution has all these gaps but over time this amazing document has filled in gaps 13th amendment filled in the gap for slaves 
the what is it now the the 14th amendment the, the 14th 15th, amendment right and then finally women right the 19th amendment finally filled in those gaps so now the more people are getting are, are getting you know the rights liberties and protections extended to them so the gaps are being filled right but today 2022 there's still gaps there's still people falling through and right now the biggest people that fall through are unborn children children unborn children so that that so that's that's where the dilemma comes in, right? Because like I said, I've been pro-choice all my life, but you look at the way this works. You look at kind of the timeline of the Constitution, and slowly these gaps are being filled. And in the end, really, personhood, the morality question, that's really un, you know, as as stomach turning as that that statement is, that's really what's gonna get us the protections as women is to is for the constitution to acknowledge personhood. You know, and right now, the the Constitution or Supreme Court says it's up to the states. Okay, then it's up to the states. The up to right. right now, it's up to the states, and so we work on the state level. You know, personhood on the state level level, and and maybe every single fifty two states are going to say personhood starts at conception, but within that concept of you know a, a human being is a human being at conception at certain times the rights of the woman supersede the rights of, of, of the child. And, and that's what we have to work with, you know, and that's what pro-lifers, you know, uh, um, get so angry about and get so impassioned about. That's what you have yes. to work with. But in the end, uh, what I want to say to people who are pro-choice in the end, if you extend protection of the unborn in the constitution, you are by default ex extending protection to women who bear those unborn children. So all of those things that you mentioned, the social stigma, the economic disadvantage, all of those things necessarily have to go away because rights, liberties, and protections have to be extended to the unborn child and the person carrying that child, right? So, exactly. So I think we're really on the same side. As weird as that sounds, I think we're really on the same side. And honestly... I, I, I don't vote conservative, but if if um, conservative women are out there, um, you taking uh, conservative women's and women's coalitions, taking personhood to the Constitution, you're, you're a powerful force, an incredible, power, powerful force for change. And I, I want to support that. Uh, and then uh, women who, who vote on the liberal side to extend rights and 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 um, and protections to women today for our re reproductive rights and our liberties and our, and, and our privacy, you know, that's a powerful force too. But of course it is. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, if I'm in my twenties and I, I got pregnant and I didn't mean to get pregnant. And if I have this baby, I'm not going to get that job or that job is going to go to someone that isn't going to go on maternity leave. You know, that's a, we can maybe coalesce as women there too and say, you know, as, as employers, we can say, look, that's the best person for the job. So she has to go on maternity leave. What federal protections, you know, um, are available? So to everyone in the chain, the employer, the employee, the family, you know, and if we start to look at it in that sense, because there's no way that men will be equal to women ever because they don't have a uterus. Okay, so <laughs> not only that, I mean, there is so much that a 20 year old is going through if she just started a career yeah. and the but men company, don't have to worry she's about. afraid that if she gets pregnant, the company is going to let her go or yeah. what, yeah. you know, you are so right. There, the stigma of a woman having to make a decision yeah. about her life, her future, her present, everything. So for that, I want to say, you know, I have no children of my own, living children of my own. And when I look at some of my clients, some of my friends, um, someone, I, I have friends that have four kids, five children, and I've got clients that I help them with getting pregnant that have tried so many times and they can't conceive and then you know they do the in vitro and then they conceive and with the hypnobirthing and all that kudos kudos to all of you who can juggle and manage and here's the word to the best of your ability 
because there is no perfection. There is no perfect mother. There is no perfect wife. There is no perfect human being. And to the best of what you can do, you know, because when we grow up, it's understanding the things that a woman has to face, the emotional connection, the mental anguish, the physical, going through that entire physical thing, and then being told or being under this kind of a stigma, it's not easy. So kudos. Yeah, and I, I, I wish that, and, and you know, maybe it starts small, maybe just in our own families, in our community, where we, we really start to come together as women. And I, I'm really hoping that it can become a national movement, especially in the light of the overturning of Roe versus Wade, that, um, it, it, you know, everything grassroots will eventually make it to, to the Constitution. Yes. But but to really take the experience of women and all women and and honor it and honor it because you know uh if, if someone has an unintended unintended pregnancy she needs amazing amount of support the same amount of support that someone who got pregnant on purpose needs right and and, and there shouldn't be a difference i think the women's experience needs and and I don't know if there's a way to start a movement or or get people in touch with a movement like that. Um, uh, I know that federally funded movements are are going to start you know cropping up because that's that's how we that's how we you know that's how we work within the law, right? And and that's right. Funny how brilliant women are is that we'll find a way. We'll find a way. Um, that's and, a beautiful thing that you said. As a matter of fact, I want to mention that at Heal Within. Every month, we're starting uh, a group of women, group therapy, group sessions. And uh, first, uh, first one is going to be uh, a July 11th, which is a Monday. July 11th, we will come together. If you are interested in participating, ladies or even gentlemen, it doesn't matter. We're just going to come together and start small in finding a network of support system for one another and that's what we're going to be doing we're going to have tea and talk and let's do this my uh you are welcome to make reservations call us at heal within and remember everything that i do is not only to empower women but for women to show up and stand up and speak up for who they are with no ramification with no pointing fingers at who we are because we are all human beings. That's amazing. And and thank you. Thank you for doing that because it starts here. It starts with our small group of women within exactly. our families. With, That's what within the 3E event is all yes. about, is yes. coming together to empower women, bringing speakers, doing healing exercises and everything. So and if yeah. you haven't heard yet, please, right, Chris? Yes, yes, it's it's an amazing event and a place to to get support. You know, there wherever you need support, you can find it. You just have to reach out. You know, um, gosh, I, I I'm a, a, a testament to the support that Lisa's given me and her circle of people have given me throughout the you know ten plus years that we've known each other. It's amazing, and one of the things that that um, we can do, you know, ourselves to help women and to help progress our society is to listen, right? Is to really listen. And that's why um, these group meetings and 3E, it's a great way to practice listening, you know? And the way I practice listening is, is um, you know, we don't have time in our in our um, usual talks, but um, I I usually, when, when somebody is talking and they are saying something I don't agree with, what I try to do is repeat what I've heard. So I'll start with what I hear you saying is, and I really, really try to repeat what I heard without adding in my own opinions. And then at the end of it, I go, hmm, because isn't that what we all want when when we come across somebody that we think doesn't agree with us and we want our say, we want our opinion out there. You want the response to be what I heard you say is, and then you hear back what you said, 
And then you, and then that person says, huh, I mean, isn't that a great response? So if we start, then I think some of this, the clashing between right and left will kind of, you know, won't go away. Um, but, you know, keeping our emotion in check and, and, you know, with things like hypnotherapy really helped me to get calm, to get out of that fight or flight when I'm in a conversation so that I'm open to hearing what somebody has to say and listening. Um, because I think that's the start, right? To be heard. To be heard, to feel like I matter. And, you know, in the end, right, that's what we all want. We all exactly. want the rights, liberties, and protections that everybody else has. So can we do it? You know, that's the question. Can we get can we? Yes, we can. And another thing that I think it would be behoove us to remember two things. Um, be mindful of your body. Um, care for yourself. And remember that this, if you start treating yourself, yourself, the entire thing, which is the mind, the body, the emotions, physically, mentally, emotionally, the castle. And the, when you open the doors, what comes into the castle and recognizing that what you allow inside you, the energy you allow inside you. Okay. So that's one. And the second thing, which is great for any kind of a communication instead of getting at each other is to realize maybe you have a communication and say i may not agree with you but i heard you and respect your opinion which is not mine right exactly exactly that's beautifully beautifully said yeah and maybe you can can you write it and put it on your page so we can memorize it because i want <laughs> I want to be able to say that and, you know, practice saying it so that I can say it easily and freely, you know. And, oh, and the other thing. Effortlessly. I want to, yeah, effortlessly. I also want to mention that if you as a if you see a young woman, you know, I don't eight year from eight years old. How, how, how early do some girls get their period? They become childbearing sometimes as early as nine years old, 10 years old, you know. 10 years those, old. Yeah. Right. You see, a, a um, you know, a young girl a young woman you know uh, um, who's had her period and doesn't have a support system maybe it's and i'm not talking about just girls that are that are orphaned and don't have a mom even some girls that have a mom don't have the support yes. they're attaching to their friend group instead you know we as experienced women can reach out and and be that support and be open sometimes Amen. You know, you can be you can be kind of like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe these what these girls are talking about. But they need they need us. They need us women, experienced women to be their support, to be a, a safe sounding board. You know, uh, when I was not um, only that, but we are here to support them and stand by them right. versus judging them for where right. they are and how they are. Right. The example is when I was 17. I had an unintended pregnancy in high school. I was 17 years old. And, you know, everybody was like shocked and oh my gosh. And, and, you know, the school at that time was like, as soon as you start showing, you can't come to class. We'll just, and, you know, I don't know what, what kind of deal they had with the, the school system, but they just weren't going to let me come to class anymore. They didn't let me graduate or they let me graduate. They gave me a graduation or a certificate, a, a high school um, diploma, but I wasn't able to to walk with my my uh, classmates because I was already showing. But I remember that when it went out that I was going to be out of school because I was pregnant, and I was in a Catholic high school. Okay, <laughs> a Catholic high school. Um, this girl that was super popular. She was like one of the most popular, really pretty girl, and th that I thought was like the most confident. You know, she had everything, the looks, the grades, the popularity. She had everything. She came up to me and she was like scared out of her life. And she asked me, she was like, what is sex like? Does it hurt? Because my boyfriend is pressuring me to have sex with him. I mean, she turned to me and I'm like, like on the scale of the social thing, I was like the social pariah, right? I was considered like the failure when it came to 17 year olds and she was coming to me. So 
that that clues me in that you know young girls young women teens middle school girls you know they don't have the support that really they need that's why the statistics are the way they are 20 year olds exactly. and 30 year olds there's no support out there so if we as experienced mothers experienced wives experienced women uh, you know you don't have to be a healthcare executive or or a clinical hypnotherapist you can just be an experienced woman if you can be there for the young women in your life the young women in your in your community that is that's going to help that is really going to set the stage for healthier more equity not necessarily equality right okay we so this reminds me this puts us at this point every single one of you watching this episode of real talk with lisa i believe at this very moment a whole new thing just surfaced lisa and chris together we are ready to be your support system yes 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 <laughs> absolutely yes that's the part I, yeah absolutely um yeah whatever i can do to support you and help you exactly so with that in mind thank you so much because i believe every time you and i speak we speak real talk we speak candid talk and we speak from both sides and we bring it home to saying no matter who you are where you are what you are and how you dress how you look you matter to us yes and we are here to support you and that's how heal within has come together because we want you to heal instead of punish yourself yes so thank you so much chris I know I have taken over the half an hour, but <laughs> some uh, technical difficulties in the first five minutes. So, <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> you know what? No matter what, we overcome challenges. Yes, right? doing the best we can every that's day. It. That's all we can do. So mm. thank you so much for always being a support system, my friend, my colleague. Um, the person I go to for a lot of things that I need support with. And for that, I, all of you for being a part of this segment of Real Talk with Lisa, please push the button, subscribe, be part of us, and we will see you next week. Until then, God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Bye, Chris. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here.